All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Galen, and uh, I work at Quixel. I'm the head of evangelism for Quixel. So basically what that means is that I'm uh, out in the field talking to developers, talking to film studios, talking to uh, anyone that's kind of participating in the Megascans ecosystem, and uh, basically kind of figuring out how scan data and Megascans could potentially fit in with their workflows. Um, so I'll kind of talk like a little bit about sort of what we're going to cover today so you guys have an idea uh, about uh, what's in store. And then uh, from there, um, I'm going to be here after the presentation answer questions. So you guys have anything you want to ask, uh, I'll stick around here for a bit. So um, yeah, so I guess we'll kind of start with just an overview of what Quixel is. So if you guys aren't familiar with what we do, uh, we are the world's largest uh, library of physically based scanned assets. It's currently available in the industry. Um, we have an eco-region approach to gathering this data. So what that means is that effectively we're going out into the field. We're scanning on five continents at any time. And from there, what we're doing is we're actually breaking down an ecosystem to all of its most basic elements down to like the minutia of everything you could possibly need to reassemble that environment. So what does that look like? That means we're scanning uh, with drones. That means we have about 14 different types of scanners that we're actually kind of uh, bringing out into the field and kind of working uh, to gather all this data and to collect it in the highest quality possible way. So we're breaking down you know, the largest cliffs down to the smallest rock twig, leaf, and branch. And from there, uh, you know, we're using a proprietary technology that ensures that we're getting uh, this data at the highest possible quality and also on the processing side as well. So what that means is that we, we put it through a proprietary workflow that allows us to, uh, in a render agnostic way, extract all different types of calibrations for whether you're using an offline render or a real-time solution like Unreal Engine. And, so, uh, and you can switch between all of these different calibrations on the fly. So, um, we have a ton of training content that's available on our YouTube channel as well. We very much want to uh, give our users and everyone in the development community uh, everything they possibly need in order to understand what we do and have a firm understanding of some of our products. So uh, what we're going to talk about today specifically is uh, uh, our short rebirth. So if you guys haven't seen it, we're going to roll it here really quick. And then we're kind of going to go into like a deep dive about everything that we did in order to actually build that and uh, talk about some of the tech specifics. So let's go ahead and roll this real quick. Adaptation the ability to learn from past experience, the use of knowledge to alter their environment. These virtues defined our creators and drove them to the brink of destruction. But we cannot exist without them. We must save her. within us. Humanity has always had the potential to recognize its flaws and choose a better way. Can we save humanity? Was bringing her here the right choice? All right, so that is Rebirth. Um, uh, so basically, I'll kind of talk like a little bit about sort of what the goal was from the start there, and then we'll start to really break it down into some of uh, the, the, the things that actually kind of brought us to the final completion here. So the goal from the start was really to prove ultimately that photorealism is absolutely possible today, and not only that it's possible, but it's possible in a real-time setting. And we obviously chose Unreal Engine for that. Um, we were able to extract really photorealistic images from the editor here, um, as you saw in the trailer here. So the, the composition of the team was such that we actually only had three environment artists that worked on this demo. We had support uh, from our friends at SideFX on the technical side. And uh, they helped us out with some processing and some kind of uh, under the hood type stuff to kind of uh, enable us to kind of work faster. 
But uh, at the end of the day, uh, what we want to do is actually kind of assemble uh, the Avengers sort of of like these different industries. We talk a lot at Quixel about how there's a really kind of special time in the industry right now of this convergence of all these different industries coming together, learning a lot from each other, right? So we have VFX uh, quality supervisors and film guys that were actually kind of supervising our uh, AAA game artists. And then from there, uh, we actually had a previous team that was kind of focused more in sort of arch viz and like the enterprise space. And so kind of coming together and all sort of learning from each of these different fields is ultimately what led us to Rebirth. So um, that was something that we wanted to, to kind of prove is that this convergence is happening now and Unreal Engine really kind of finds itself at the, the nexus of all of it. So from there, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the genesis of the trip here. So we took a scan trip to Iceland. It's uh, definitely the biggest trip that we've ever taken. It's the most ambitious trip as well. So this is uh, over a dozen team members from Quixel actually went to go and scan in Iceland for over a month. And we gathered so much data from this trip, it is crazy. <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the most challenging trip that we've ever taken in that the conditions prove uh, you know, just in the in the short in the time that we were there, that it's incredibly difficult to to kind of get this data when everyone's freezing, <laughs> and uh, and it was also like just looking at the types of assets and the areas that we were going. They're some of the most complex types of assets and, and eco regions that we'd ever been to, um, and so we were scanning here with drones. We're scanning here on the field, getting everything you could possibly need to break down a lot of these environments, and you're actually seeing a lot of that content actually going up on the site. Um, it's been going up ever since uh, the trip. And so, yeah, I mean, that was kind of where we knew uh, after Iceland that we, we had to tell a story in this space. It was something that we just needed to do. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, sort of the previs and sort of went into that. So we had our friends at Beauty and the Bit start to construct some paintings for us that largely informed what we were actually going to be doing for this, right? We knew we wanted it to kind of take place in this eco region, but we weren't really sure exactly like what is the world, uh, what was the tone that we were kind of going for. And this painting specifically was one that I think it really, it really kind of solidified in our minds. This is what we want to be doing, right? And so Victor Bonafonte uh, is the author of this, and he did a bunch of amazing paintings for us. But the thing that's really neat is that he's actually taking photo ref that we gathered out on our scan trip in Iceland and just photo bashing it into uh, this painting and then kind of putting in this sort of ambiguous uh, kind of spaceship that's sort of in the back. And this is really kind of when we knew this is the demo that we wanted to make. And so we really wanted to do, uh, as best we could, reconstructing these environments based on these paintings that Victor did here. So the first one uh, was a, a shot that was actually cut, but this one was another one, again, where we just knew this is the direction that we wanted to go, and we wanted to match this as close as we could. So I'll talk a little bit about the importance of reference and how this reference largely impacted the decisions that our artists were actually making inside of Unreal. So this is a very pedestrian photo shot on an iPhone out the window on the way to one of the locations that we're looking to scan. But there's so much information that can be gathered from this type of data. So a very simple picture, like I said, but all that we're, uh, what we're kind of getting from this is effectively that uh, we can look at the way that the moss actually sits on the ground. We can see the way the greenery is actually creeping up the mountains. All these things largely impact the way that our artists are making decisions. So again, simple scouting photos. These photos are super important for us in actually kind of building out this world, making it actually something that's believable and realistic. Um, this is one that's actually pretty amazing for like looking at the reference for atmospherics, right? really kind of looking at the way the fog sits on the ground, the way that it actually kind of uh, affects uh, anything that's in the distance and these types of things, all super important for really kind of nailing that level of realism, right? The scans themselves kind of lend, obviously, the photorealistic quality to what we're seeing on the textures and the surfaces. But Unreal Engine uh, has some amazing tools and really allowed us to kind of match this level of atmospherics at that photorealistic quality. So, the mashup of all those different things really is what kind of lends itself to the photorealistic quality that we had in sort of creating Rebirth. So again, just some simple scouting photos. And these photos are really important as well. So these are two of kind of our hero assets, uh, shots that really kind of made it very prominently in the demo. But we wanted to kind of give our guys uh, access to these types of photos so they can see actually how maybe sand creeps up next to these types of rocks, how different plants kind of lay next to it. All these things are super important turns out that we are not as creative as we would like to be. And so <laughs> you have to really kind of rely on this photo reference in order to really uh, get that photorealistic quality when you're making decisions inside of the engine. 
So the next thing that we'll kind of talk about is the vehicle, right? So we knew we wanted to have this, this vehicle in the scene. We weren't really sure um, what it was that we were looking to do with it. So we actually brought in uh, some really heavy hitting talent in Fausto De Martini, who's an amazing concept designer. Um, he's done some amazing work. Just go check out his art station. It's ridiculous. So he did this awesome concept for us uh, in 3D. And um, we actually kind of landed on this pretty quickly. We knew we kind of wanted it to be sort of sports car-ish. Uh, with also kind of like a utility aspect maybe, so a little bit more industrial in that way. And this is ultimately what we landed on. So, um, and I won't steal too much of their thunder, but if you guys watch the side effects presentation that they did on the live stream, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, um, they cover some of the tools in the game dev tool set that's available in Houdini. And uh, with those tools inside of Houdini, we we're actually able to crunch this thing down and make it something that was game res in almost no time whatsoever. We knew that our guys weren't going to be able to spend as much time taking the time here to retopologize this, bake this down, texture it in that way. We had other fish to fry as far as making really photorealistic environments. And so our environment artists just did not have the time to kind of do this. So Houdini largely paved the way in order to kind of make these types of assets just a, a really, really simple task for us. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with how the Megascans library works, uh, we have a lot of amazing tools that allow artists to go in and kind of search the different types of scans that are currently available across a wide uh, variety of eco regions. I'm just kind of showing the Iceland scans here. So the thing that I really want to stress about the way that we uh, kind of approach content is that we're very much looking to democratize content, make it accessible for all people across all different industries. And so um, the reason I'm telling you that is that because when we were making Rebirth, right, we wanted to make sure that our assets are hitting the store day in day for every single person that had access to them. We didn't want to hold this content back and have our moment in the, you know, when Rebirth came out to be like, all right, now you can play with our toys, right? We wanted to make sure that everyone had access to them day and date in the same day that our artists were actually putting them directly into the shots that we were building. So this is just, uh, this is just in Bridge. So if you guys aren't familiar with, uh, with Bridge, it's just a really simple way of kind of browsing the Megascans ecosystem. I'm just going to roll it real quick. But ultimately, what it is is just a really simple way of kind of browsing the content and being able to kind of see what's available. So uh, the reason I showed this kind of quick pan here is actually that we've only actually crunched about 15% of the total data from our Iceland haul. So we still have a ton of content that's still to come from all the eco regions that we scanned in Iceland. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is kind of the terrain, right? Terrain is something that's super important, even if it's something that we laid out sort of in the Vista. So um, with that, we went to open topography and actually sourced LiDAR directly for all the shots that you're seeing here. So unfortunately, there's no LiDAR content for terrains that's available in Iceland. So we actually source from Alaska. And these are the exact two areas that we actually source from. So you guys can go and download this stuff right now. Um, Another really can cool thing that Houdini can do is actually kind of take this point cloud data and make it something that's digestible that you can put into a scene in Unreal. So this is, these are literally the areas that we, we source from that are actually building up a lot of the, the areas that you're seeing in the back. So if you go back and sort of watch the short, you're going to be able to see that we're actually sourcing from real world locations. And then again, I won't steal their thunder, but if you watch the side effects presentation, they showed kind of how we made a lot of the decisions as far as kind of having the moss kind of creep up and really kind of figuring out erosion and the different ways that we can make this actually look realistic. So we started with some really simple tests inside of the engine. And so this is a really early prototype of uh, Owen, one of our environment artists. If you guys are familiar with Crab Rave, uh, Owen was one of our guys that actually worked on this. And so he created this really kind of simple uh, prototype early on for us of seeing what motion would look like with a vehicle in, a, in an Unreal scene. So this is about four hours of work for him, just kind of throwing a couple simple Megascans assets into the scene. And we called it the cigarette box for a while with lights on it, just moving through the scene, just kind of see how it looked. And so we iterated very quickly inside of the engine because we knew we wanted to kind of see how motion worked with lights affecting our assets and all of the different kind of fog actors that are kind of working in tandem. So these are the types of shots that are super easy to prototype inside of the engine. And so we took advantage of that in being able to iterate on this stuff very quickly. So on top of that, uh, some of the considerations we had to make early on are performance, right? Unreal Engine uh, has an amazing viewport, and we're able to throw a ton of polygons at it. Um, 
But if you're familiar with the Megascans library, we have cinematic grade quality meshes that weigh in at crazy high values for cinematic grade quality. And so we wanted to kind of figure out, is there a way that we can kind of get that cinematic grade quality inside of the editor? And it turns out that, yes, there was a way for us to do that. And it was, again, via Houdini. Houdini and the, our friends at SideFX crafted some amazing tools for us that's basically like a fancy version of Decimation Master. So again, this is a quick prototype scene that Owen threw together in about four hours early on of kind of just throwing these assets into the scene, figuring out how cameras and the atmospherics and all the different assets kind of work together. And so what was really cool is just seeing these types of prototype shots and being able to kind of actually make decisions about performance based on what we were seeing here. So again, just really trying to figure out how we can actually kind of get that content into the editor and make it something that's, that's functioning and runs well. So we have a full breakdown on our YouTube, by the way, of about a 45 minutes of in-engine content that you guys can take a look at of exactly how we made a lot of the decisions for a lot of these scenes here. But basically, we're going to be releasing a version of this scene that you're seeing here today. It's actually kind of a 360 uh, version of a couple different shots from Rebirth kind of mashed into a single level, running at incredibly high frame rates. Um, and really kind of the goal in kind of showing this is ultimately just that it is possible to kind of go and prototype these shots, take some really basic kind of camera moves, um, and add a really nice level of uh, subtle realism to these scenes. So I won't go into this too much, but definitely go check out. It's literally a 45-minute breakdown of everything from fog to cameras to uh, placing actors, all that stuff. So go and check it out on our YouTube channel. But ultimately, it just kind of shows how we're able to construct these shots and how easy it was to make all these decisions inside of the engine very, very quickly to extract final pixel quality that literally rivals offline render quality. So. So these are just some of the breakdowns of some of the shots. So you guys can kind of see exactly how we were able to kind of get this level of detail. So really kind of taking all of these amazing kind of uh, assemblies that were in, in the shots and kind of making it something that was actually um, uh, workable inside the editor. Again, I talk a lot about performance and something that we really need to make sure this stuff was working super well inside of the editor. And so um, these types of shots really kind of show how we were able to kind of craft something that's kind of nice. Um, so from there, uh, the thing I want to stress about this is that there were no uh, matte paintings or anything like that in this at all. So everything that you're seeing is actual geometry. Um, and we were able to really kind of push the editor as far as it could go. So one of the things that we, uh, we really wanted to kind of make special in this demo, again, is if you go back and actually listen to this with headphones, you might actually kind of get a new perspective after I show you this. Um, we had uh, an amazing musician named Terhe Insigset. And he's Norwegian. And we actually flew him out to Canada. And we rented a, an ice rink in Canada. And all of his instruments are literally carved from ice. And so if you go back and listen to the, the soundtrack again with headphones, and you kind of identify maybe some textures that maybe you're not familiar with, that's ice. So literally, he builds horns. He builds uh, xylophones and percussion instruments and all this type of stuff. And we layered all these sounds from this shoot that we did specifically for Rebirth. We layered that on top to actually make the soundtrack something that's new and unique, and hopefully something that people have never heard before, um, and kind of a new and unique angle. So uh, it was really cool and apparent uh, immediately when I went to dinner with our, uh, our composer, I kind of told him about the project. He was like, oh yeah, no, like uh, my big inspirations kind of early on with my music career are actually based in like Icelandic music. And I was like, okay, we found the right guy. Like we're talking to the right person here. So this is Jason, who's our composer. And uh, yeah, he did an amazing job. So definitely go and check out the soundtrack again uh, with headphones if you get a chance. So the next thing I want to talk about really quick here is that we actually kind of layered on some nice kind of camera techniques uh, to add some lev another level of realism into the shot. So while you can add procedural noise to lots of camera moves inside of Sequencer and these different things, we wanted to actually take it to the next level. So <clears throat> we had a couple shots where literally we put our guy uh, in a VR kind of setup and put him in a chair and like for the shots where he's like actually kind of moving uh, in a car like down, the, down the, the canyon actually. We're shaking him in different ways trying to get some camera vibrations that were actually realistic. And what was cool is that we're actually able to kind of interpolate between, uh, in sequencer, kind of interpolate between the actual camera move that we had programmed initially 
and these really, really subtle movements that we're getting from actually uh, tapping him and kind of making him do different things. But literally, if you go back and watch the camera moves inside of the editor, again, a lot of them are super subtle. And we were just able to kind of, with curves, kind of tone down areas that maybe kind of got a little too ridiculous. But this is literally the process that we added in in order to kind of get that level of realism. So I want to give a huge shout out to all of our partners in this that kind of helped make it possible. And so again, beating the bit for all their previous work, side effects for everything they did under the hood for us, Ember Lab doing the music and the cameras and helping us out there. And obviously Epic Games for really kind of believing in us and really helping us out along the way. So if you guys have any questions at all, definitely come up. And, uh, I'll be here uh, for the next couple hours and for the rest of the week. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, yeah, see you next time.